The 2019 Annual Town Meeting for Westwood will be held on Monday, May 6th. It will be held in the Westwood High School Auditorium. Check-in begins at 6.30, recognitions at 7 o'clock, and the business portion of the meeting starts at 7.30. Here's what you need to know before you go. There are a total of 22 articles for consideration. Each article was vetted and given a recommendation of yes, no, or indefinite postponement from the Finance and Warrant Commission. In the words of our town moderator, Indefinite postponement means the FinCom would like to kill the article. And it would be simpler to say, town meeting, I mean, FinCom recommends that town meeting vote against this article. The first 16 articles are sponsored by the Board of Selectmen. The first two articles are focused on revisions to the existing FY19 budget, followed by typical finance articles appropriating funds for FY20, which are presented by the finance director and her team. The first two articles are to see if the town will vote to appropriate funds to supplement appropriations such as salaries, assessments, building maintenance, and municipal budgets. Uh, we are doing $100,000 for snow and ice for some of the late season activity. And we do have the $100,000 for the school security projects, $73,500 in some ambulance services and equipment needs, $26,000 for some of the reval costs that we had. It was a full reval year. The third article, is to see if the town will vote to appropriate the recommended FY20 school and municipal operating budgets. The fourth article is to see if the town will vote to raise and to appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $1,322,000 for the purchase or lease of various municipal capital needs, such as radio upgrades for our fire department and vehicles needed for the DPW. The fifth article is to see if the town will vote to appropriate $1,017,000 for the purchase or lease of various school capital needs, including HVAC units, roofing, and general repair and maintenance. We've been very, very clear that while we've made progress on other financial policies, we had really not been making the same progress on capital, and that was our goal to do so. Last year, we had $1.7 in those two base articles and this year in your proposed FY20 budget we have 2.3 million almost at the target. The sixth article is to see if the town will vote to raise appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $1,050,000 for the purchase or lease of various sewer capital needs including stormwater maintenance and a pump station facility program. The projects that they have there is uh, one that's eligible uh, for an MWRA grant program, which we've used in the past. Um, so they would be looking and, and working with the MWRA on that. Um, and it's that type of thing that if we're in that program and come back, there'd be less of the town's funds used um, and be participating with the MWRA. The seventh article is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $1,339,500 for the purchase or lease of special capital needs, such as a basketball court refurbishment, the maintenance of Fire Station 1, and HVAC work at the Thurston Middle School. So this year that is uh, proposed now at $1.3 million as shown in the green, and when we get into the articles you'll see the individual projects. The eighth article is to see if the town will vote to appropriate from the ambulance revenue account the sum of $67,500 for the purchase or lease of capital equipment related to the fire department, including breathing apparatus and rescue equipment. The ninth article is to see if the town will vote to appropriate a sum of money to pay the costs of various roadway improvements, specifically sidewalk enhancements along 109 between Manhattan Street and the Walpole Town Line, where the Dedham Westwood Water District will be installing a water main. The tenth article is to see if the town will vote to appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $125,000 for the stabilization fund for a bond rating and to protect the town in case of emergency. The $125,000 transfer from free cash, um, that would bring us in FY20 up to about 3.2 million in the account, as shown in green. Our target's about 3.4 million, so we're really um, in good shape there. The 11th article is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $1,440,000 to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund. We currently have about $8.3 million in the Liability Trust account. With this appropriation, um, after July 1, we would have about $10 million in that account. Uh, 
and that's, you know, we're looking at the overall liability right now, long term, is about $39 million. So we're you know, well on our way towards addressing that. The 12th article is to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to offer tax increment financing, also known as TIFs, to incentivize commercial development projects to select parcels within the University Station project area. In order to compete in today's market, everyone, every other town is giving it to companies coming in. Uh, and so we're looking to keep that option available to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we obviously have to answer to the residents and explain our position if we do grant them. So uh, this article is just a, to have the town authorize the, board, the select board to uh, enter into a TIF if needed. The 13th article is to see if the town will vote to discontinue a portion of a public way known as Hedgerow Lane that has been relocated to provide access to an approved subdivision known as Westwood Estates. Because it's being reconstructed uh, for a new development in that area. The 14th article is to see if the town will vote to authorize a change in the town's charter to rename the Board of Selectmen to the Select Board. It basically, it's going to be non-gender. Uh, it'll be a select member. Uh, we'll, we'll now just be called um, Select Board or Select Member, and the Chairman will no longer be called the Chairman, it will be the Chair. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. Since we've already started using it, we're just trying to get town affirmation. The 15th article is to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to develop a program and potentially enter into a contract to aggregate the electricity load of the businesses and residents of Westwood. But mainly it's done to stabilize electricity prices, to achieve savings for customers, and increasingly it's being done to help increase the renewable electricity content that's in the electricity supply. The 16th article is to see if the town will vote to transfer from the school committee to the Board of Selectmen a parcel of land of nearly 6,000 square feet near Laura Lane to be sold by auction as a surplus land for no less than $3,700. The 17th article, sponsored by the town clerk, would see if the town will vote to adopt changes to the general bylaws to add electronic voting as a valid method of voting at a town meeting alongside standing and written votes, if the moderator is unable to determine or doubts the oral vote. The thing is at the moderator's discretion. You know, he could still ask for a standing vote, he could do a written vote or electronic vote, but at least he has a discretion to, to do that, make that decision. The last five articles are sponsored by the planning board. The 18th article is to see if the town will vote to approve amendments to the Westwood Zoning Bylaw to permit accessory retail uses in highway business zones. This article was voted upon and passed in the fall 2017 town meeting. By a vote of yes, 101, no, 36, the two-thirds requirement is met and Article 10 passes. But was disavowed by the Attorney General due to a procedural defect by the Planning Board. So when the Planning Board was here, at a public hearing, um, at the end of the night, not all planning board members were still here, and we didn't make. You have to. The planning board has to vote to a specific date, time, and place to continue the hearing, and they did not do that. The 19th article is to see if the town will vote to approve certain amendments to the Westwood zoning bylaw to amend definitions for a structure as it relates to fence and wall heights. This article would change the height limit for needing a permit from six feet and under to seven feet and under. Essentially, that would mean there'd be no special permit option to go up to eight feet. It would just limit um, fences um, up to seven feet by right. And then if anyone wanted to go higher, they would have to make an argument for a variance. The 20th article is to see if the town will vote to approve amendments to the Westwood Zoning Bylaw to amend the Residential Retirement Community section in relation to building height, a small density increase, and other changes. Um, staff's original proposal was to add an affordability requirement. Um, the same affor affordability requirement that we have in our special permit sections elsewhere in the bylaw, which requires if you're proposing eight or more units to have 15% affordable with the exact same language. Um, once um, we started working on that, we did hear from um, representatives from Fox Hill Village about requesting some additional changes to um, remove old um, references to a coordinated unit um, and revise the language to um, say assisted living residents um, 
to also revise the definition of building height to be more consistent with how we define it elsewhere in our bylaw. The 21st article is to see if the town will vote to amend the section related to accessory uses in residential districts. This article seeks to revise the existing bylaw that limits the amount of vehicles allowed in an enclosed structure or in a driveway to three each without a permit. That's it, the existing, um, the existing zoning is not enforceable because it basically everyone has area in front of their house that could hold four cars and so it kind of becomes a, an issue that they can't enforce. So. This article received a vote of indefinite postponement from the FinCom on March 25th. Okay, all in favor Rachel, of a definite postponement. postponement. Of indefinite, indefinite postponement. postponement. And planning board voted to not recommend the article for approval on April 23rd for various reasons. I think we have a couple of articles we have to fix in the next, you know, the next board has to fix. Uh, and it's just not going to get fixed on the floor of town meeting very well. These negative votes indicate the intention for this town meeting to defeat the article and revisit it for a future town meeting. The 22nd article is to see if the town will vote to approve housekeeping amendments to various sections of the Westwood Zoning Bylaw. Westwood Media Center recommends that voters get more informed before town meeting. Materials and in-depth information for each article can be found on the town website, either under the town meeting and election info category or the individual sponsor's pages. Westwood Media Center also has recordings of every FinCom, Board of Selectmen, and Planning Board meeting that discusses the warrant articles. Town meeting will be held on May 6th. We hope to see you there.